Okay, last five minutes before the break. Um, on the set of instructions that I were given, was given for Manah Khalil's class, the last portion is just uh, used for certain advices that we can, you know, pass on as a means of educating ourselves, inshallah, and we speak to, I speak to myself first. I actually had some slides set up, but uh, we're having some diffi technical difficulties on, on the laptop. Uh, that we're just trying to, to get into it. Khair. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassid li amri, wa ahlul uqadatan min lisani yafqahu qawli, subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana, Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa zidna ilma, Allahumma ja'ala amalana khalisatan li wajhik, wa la taj'al fiha haddan li ghayrik, amin ya Rabbul Alameen. What I think, and I'll try to summarize it in this next five minutes, something that's very, very important, is the process of transformation process of transformation each and every one of us is on a journey and each and every one of us we we working towards bettering ourselves we're working towards becoming better believers better slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately our goal is that all of us want Jannah for this is a process if we look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum they came from a state what is known as jahiliyyah complete ignorance they were in a state where they used to, if it was a female child that was born, they would bury the child alive. If it was, they wanted to worship, then they would make sujood to idols. Allah subhanahu wa speaks about their form of tawaf, and they would make tawaf around the Kaaba naked, with whistling and clapping. This was their form of tawaf. They would be naked, walking around the Kaaba, whistling and clapping. They would inherit women. So if the father had whatever amount of, of wives, and in that time they had 10, 20, and so on and so forth. And the father passed on, the son would inherit the one that's not his mother. The son would inherit, she becomes mine, and they would then have relations, and she had no say. This was the state they were in. It was a very serious state. And then change happens. Change happens to the extent that not do they come out of that, but they become the forerunners in good. They become the best of the best. It gets to that point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the stamp of approval and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رضي الله عنهم that Allah is pleased with them. وَرَضُوا عَنْ and they are pleased with Allah in return for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting them. Some of them were given the glad tidings of Jannah in their lifetime. The Ashara Mubashara, the ten Sahaba that were given glad tidings in their lifetime. Imagine you're given such, of approval, such an approval that Allah says, I am happy with you. Jannah is yours. Subhanallah. The question is, what is the process? You know, how is it that we're going to come from whatever state that we are in to the next state? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us the process of transformation in the beginning of surah, the second verse of surah Jumu'ah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nabi Muhammad s.a.w. came, yet alayhim ayatihi, number one, he recited upon them the verses. So they would hear Quran. They were amazed by Quran. But that was not yet enough. There's one story where the Quraysh, three of the heads of Quraysh, they were so blown away by recitation, they would go in the middle of the night when nobody knows they are there, and they would go hide by the, the house of Rasulullah to listen to his recitation. So what happens is three of the, the main guys, the one is on the one side of Rasulullah's house, the other is on the other side, and the other is on the other side, and Rasulullah is, is reciting Quran in Tahjud. And they are listening and they are mesmerized by the Quran. And as it comes to the end of his recitation, they then leave and they see each other. And they get a shock and they say, hey, what are you doing here? And they say, what are you doing here? Hey, what are you? you tell me first what are you doing here. And then they come to agreement, we promise, we take an oath that we're not coming back. We can't come back. You know, we're the leaders. If people see us listening to this, then everyone's going to start following Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next night what happens? They go again, they're intrigued by Quran, Quran is something special to them. And the one hides again, and the other one hides again, and the other one hides again. And at the end of the recitation, they start sneaking away, and they catch each other again, and they say, hey, we promised, but you didn't hear, you promised. And they said, they make another promise, and the next night they found each other there again, and eventually they stayed away. They were mesmerized by Quran. There's one particular incident where a person comes to Rasulullah, and he's reading Quran, and this is one of the, 
He, the staunches of, of the enemies against Rasulullah but he wants to convince Rasulullah otherwise. So whilst Rasulullah is reciting, he's so mesmerized that Rasulullah comes to a point of sajida, a point where you prostrate. So he comes to a point of sajida and this person is so mesmerized that Rasulullah prostrates and he finds himself in prostration as well. And after that he, 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 he sits up and he realizes what happened and he runs away. And then he starts saying, no, this Quran is magic and so on and so forth. So it had, it, it, it mesmerized him. It was something amazing. But it was not enough. So yet, Lua alayhim ayatihi, Rasulullah he recited the verses upon them. Then there was another step. Wa yuzakkihim. And he took them through a process of purification. Only through, the purif- only through that process, when purification took place, then the next step could take place. Only when the heart was ready to, to receive the Qur'an, when the heart was ready to receive the Qur'an, then it benefited them. So Allah subhanahu says, وَيُزَكِّهِمْ He took them through a process of purification, then وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Only now could He then teach them the Qur'an and teach them the wisdom, the sunnah of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa min qablu la fi dalalim mubin. And Allah says, Quran says about the Sahaba, and before this they were clearly astray. They were clearly astray. So we're going to hear the ayat, we're going to be amazed. And some of it is going to affect us. And when we leave, it might stay behind. And it depends on the state of the heart. It depends on the state of the mind. It depends on the state of the soul. Are we ready to receive the Qur'an? Are we ready to have it in our hearts? And are we ready to implement it in our lives? And so the, the heart is something that is very, very special. Inna, inna fil jasari la mudgha. Rasulullah says, indeed in the body there is a lamp of flesh. إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ When this lamp of flesh is correct, then the entire body and the actions are correct. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ And if it is, it is corrupted, then the body and all the actions are corrupted. And he says, Allah, behold, listen O Sahaba, هِيَ الْقَلْبِ It is the heart. If the heart is correct, then the rest of your actions are going to be correct. If the heart, the heart is incorrect, then the rest of the actions are going to be incorrect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Qada aflaha man tazakka. Indeed, he's successful. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this person is successful, he's successful. Who? Man tazakka. The one who goes through the process of purification. And so this is the process that we have to, have to be part and parcel of. You can go from Surah Fatiha, right through the entire Quran, end up with Surah Nas, and it can have absolutely no effect on your life. Like these people who are mesmerized by Quran, but they still fought Rasulullah every, every other time. Absolutely no effect. And for those who went through the process of purification, it then affected their hearts. It affected their hearts to the point where they heard the next ayah, they say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا أَيَّانَ أَوْبَيْ In Surah Anfala, Allah subhanahu wa says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ A true believer, when Allah's name is mentioned, وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Something happens to your heart. You feel something. My Creator was just mentioned. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا And when the ayat are being recited upon them, it increases their iman. Allahu Akbar. Every single time the Sahaba stepped into the Salah, they stepped in, they stepped in and they got the message of Quran and they stepped out with a new mission. My Allah just spoke to me. My Creator just spoke to me. And so my advice, part and parcel of our journey is that we, we step into this process of purification. And how is that? Rasulullah says, Inna هَذِهِ الْقُلُوبِ تَصْدَعُ كَمَا تَصْدَعُ الْحَدِيثِ أو كما قال, That indeed this heart rust like metal rust. The Sahabu concerns is for majilauha. So what is its polish, Ya Rasulullah? And Rasulullah gave three advices on different occasions. Number one, consistently keeping the tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Looking at the heart and saying, Subhanallah. And the heart gets cleansed. Saying, Alhamdulillah. The heart gets cleansed. Saying, Allahu Akbar. The heart gets cleansed. 
Number two, the second advice, Rasulullah says, read Quran, but with the intention of purification of the heart. When you have an intention, Allah then facilitates that intention. If you recite Quran for reward, you get reward. You say recite Quran for guidance, you get guidance. When you recite Quran with the p- intention of purifying the heart, the heart then becomes purified. And the third advice Rasulullah gives is, is أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ هَذِمْ مِنْ لَذَاتِ Often think about the cutter of, ple- of, of all worldly pleasures. And that is the reality that we're going to leave this world. And ask yourself, in the state that I currently am, am I ready to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I ready to, sh- to show my life's worth? You know, going to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in Medina. And next to him is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And next to him is Umar radiallahu anhu. You think of the fact of standing on the day of Qiyamah and they resurrected next to you. And they say, Ya Allah, this was my sacrifice for your deen. And you then need to present your life. Rasulullah think about this reality and ask yourself, are you ready to stand there? And through that it will assist you in your actions. I conclude with a poem of Imam Shafi, rahimallahu anhu. A giant of his time. Someone who today, through his efforts, hundreds and thousands of people are following the teachings that he has brought. Quran, making it easy to understand. All the hundreds of thousands of hadith putting it together in categories. This is how you make salah. This is how you give zakah. This is how you give hajj. And so on and so forth. At a young age, he's memorizing Quran and he gets to a point where he's struggling. And he goes to his ustad. And he says, oh ustad, I'm struggling to memorize. I need advice. Now I want you to think for a moment. If someone comes to you, you're the teacher, they ask you advice. I'm struggling to memorize. I'm struggling to do this homework. I'm struggling to do that. You're going to give them techniques, isn't it? They're going to say, okay, try this, do that, do this. What do you think the Ustaz tells him? The Ustaz who knows Imam Shafi to be someone that is pious. He tells him, stop sinning. Imam Shafi is shocked. I'm not a sinner. And then he, he makes a poem for us to think about. And he says, Shakautu ila waqi'in su'a hifdi. I complain to my ustad about my bad uh, to waqi my my ustad waqi about my bad memory I cannot memorize Quran anymore fa awsani ila tark al maasi and then he told me stop sinning fa inna al ilma nur min ilahi because you need knowledge is nur from Allah wa nur Allah la yuhda li aasi and the nur of Allah is never going to be given to a sinner He took a moment and he asked what is it that I'm doing I'm not sinning Brothers, you're going to hear what it is that he done. You're going to fall on your backs. He sat on his porch one day memorizing Quran. He looks up. He sees a female walking past. She has a bracelet on her ankle. He's memorized the bracelet. He can't memorize anymore. He makes toba after that and it is said that he had to close the one page because his memory became so good. He looked at the page and he memorized both at the same time. After making toba, after purifying his heart and his heart was ready to, to, to receive the Quran. So I speak to myself first, may we be of those that is going to take the steps of purification so that when the ayat are being recited in our classes and translated, that it affects our hearts. We make the ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it to affect our hearts so that every single time it increases our iman. Amin Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah khair. Wa akhiru da'wanan. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. So it is break, and break will end at um, 10.35, inshallah, extra five minutes as we did go a bit over time.